Hi, welcome to my channel or welcome back. Um, feel free to subscribe if you're interested in any of these topics right here. And if not, say la vie, such as life. Feel free to press that magical X button and I will literally get out of your face. Um, but new subscribers, hello, and old subscribers, hey guys, I missed you. Um, it's been a couple of days and Let me just get that out of the way. Oopsie daisies. Zip it, lock it, put it in your pocket. Okay. Put that in your pocket. Save it for later. Um, I'm going to just touch up my makeup and tell you guys about what I've been doing. Things of that nature. Um, I have been doing a lot of family stuff. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of family stuff. A lot of family events. So let's start with Thursday. Today's Saturday, November 2nd. Hi, hello, how are you doing? Um, but let's start with Thursday. So Thursday was Halloween and we, I, had a random idea that we should go to the Houston Museum of Fine Arts and I was so excited. I was so excited to do that. I was like, oh my god, yes, like, like, let's just go. And what better day to go on than Halloween? So let's go on Halloween before we trick or treat, right? Because we don't have nothing to do that day and my husband took it off specifically. So... He had time, I had time, we had time, so let's just, sorry, I'm trying to fix my hair while telling the story. I was like, well, let's just go do something. Um, now, I randomly bought the tickets, and then I told him that's what we were going to go do. And then we went, we went and did it. <laughs> so what we did was Halloween day, we woke up, we woke, we awoken, we awoken at 7 a.m. in the morning. Um, no, we woke up at 7 a.m., which is... <sighs> Uh, that was a mistake. Um, so we had to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning in order to go to Town Hall because Town Hall was having this little shindig for the children. Uh, the like, littler kids. But um, my kids love going to it. And I do have young kids and I have a teenager. So we just kind of all go to it. There's no cap on the age. It's just for, you know, it's like they do story time at the library. And everybody takes a trip to Town Hall. And they have a, the whole Town Hall is like, um, Every hallway is made into some kind of uh, theme, you know? So, like, one hallway was Harry Potter, and there was Sirius Black, and, you know, Snape, and stuff like that everywhere. And floating hats and candles, and la 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 la. And then another hallway was, like, um, Dia de los Muertos, and things of that nature. So, it was fun. It was interesting. And the kids got a whole entire two buckets full of candy because it was raining. The whole issue was that it was raining all Halloween day. Um, and some of the night. So a lot of the kids were disappointed because they were fearful that the rain would rain on their parade and stop their um, candy gathering for the evening, you know, the evening events or whatever, their evening activities. So we went to City Hall first around 11, 10 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. We stayed there until roughly around like 12 30 ish, and then we started heading to Houston to the Fine Arts Museum. Now, we are dressed in our Halloween costumes. I am dressed how I normally am. A mistake. And so we go. And my husband, he, he has not been to a fine arts museum in God knows how long. And he's been to museums. Mm, but I don't know if he's been to a fine arts museum. So I booked tickets to go see. There's an exhibit there called like Thousands of Years of the Gods or something like that. And it's a... Uh, it's an art exhibit with statues and paintings and all kinds of things from thousands of years of different gods and goddesses throughout time and history and space, you know. Um, and I was excited for that. And my kids are really into ancient Egypt right now. And they're going to have some Egyptian stuff there. There's more permanent um, pieces that are there that are Egyptian in nature. So they would have something to feel comfortable with looking at, you know. Um... And it was nice that there was a lot of Roman, Greek, Dionysus, Pan, you know, Artemis. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I had I did not see Artemis. I saw Athena and Venus. Um, it would have been nice to see Artemis. I, we didn't spend, we spent four hours there, but we could have easily spent ten and not saw everything. It was so full to the brim with art. Every corner you took, that was a whole another 
avenue of art and we got lost on our way to the gods so we did and um, so we ended up seeing a lot of the, the museum which was nice um, unfortunately you know we kind of got too close to a couple paintings and it set off an alarm Oops. but uh, they were kind to us and you know, they saw we had kids with us, and so they were just like, oh, it's, it's okay, it's fine. But they were also just doing their job, and, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun. There was a painting in particular called The Opera House on Fire that I enjoyed a lot. My only issue with it is that whenever a place like that does catch on fire, there's a lot more black smoke. The plumes are more black, so... I liked the colors and I liked the chaos. It was a lot of fun to look at. Um, that was probably one of my favorite things, other than the gods. Like that was one of my favorite like regular pieces. And then there's also the picture of me trying to punch Henry VIII because he's a piece of shit or whatever. Um, yeah, <laughs> fuck him. So he's such a dick. I fucking hate Henry VIII. Anyway. Oh my god. Anyways, I started my cycle November 1st. And so it's like, yay. And so that was yesterday. And now I'm just, you know, it's a secret mood. It's a special secret mood. What, what's the mood? I don't know. It's a secret. Silly. It's a super secret mood I'm in. It's kind of a bad one. <laughs> but I'm trying to stay positive. Uh, it's fine. It'll only be roughly seven days of torture. So it's fine. Um, a small price to pay for existence. <laughs> So we're at the Fine Arts Museum. We're looking for the gods. We can't find the gods. The, the people who work there are giving us inappropriate uh, directions. And so we go every place other than the place we were supposed to be. And so we, we found a lot of beautiful art that way. Um, some pieces gave me inspiration. Some pieces pissed me off. A lot of the Christian pieces pissed me off. And some of the statues that were Greek or Roman in nature, um, you know, it always reminds me of whenever they went in, they like, Mm, mm, I have some feelings that are, you know, mm, it's just natural that the people who win the war get to go and deface art with whatever they, however they want to deface art. Um, it's just annoying because I do like Greek, Roman, Italian. Um, I, I like a lot of older things, you know, uh, Mesopotamian, Mesoamerican, <laughs> there's, uh, there's, you know, before Christianity or the Abrahamic faith really touched everything, it was nice to see other things. And, you know, I don't know. I know, I know that even then there was issues like with you couldn't deviate from the status quo social norms of the time, you know. Um, but it's just, mm. I know there was, a, there was that oversaturation of Christian art and it was cool. It was beautiful. And it was all immaculate when you get really, really close to it. It's really beautiful and fantastic and amazing. And aggravating. It's just all aggravating. I'm so tired of seeing Jesus and Mary and Joseph. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Like, I'm so fucking tired. And this could be my period talking. But goddamn, like, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> There's just so many. Oh, oh my God. But I was there because I wanted to see all the gods and all the avenues of faith and whatnot, which they had there until January 2025. So if you're in South Texas or in Texas and you want to go see the Houston Museum of Fine Arts, um, it's like 10 bucks a person. I think under 12 is free. So it's like $30 for everybody to go. And students get half off military. All blah, 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 right? You get like discounts or whatever. Um, whatever. I don't care. It's no big deal. Anyway. So we went from town hall here, trick or treat little thing real quick, fine arts museum. I mean, I meant for four hours. I think we got home around five o'clock, four thirty or five o'clock. Um, and I, like I said, I think I said we could have easily been there for ten hours, no big deal, and it still wouldn't have been enough to enjoy and ingest everything. And Art is reflective in nature. It makes you think certain ways. And to me, like the Christian art, some of it was beautiful. It was immaculate and beautiful and fantastic and blah, 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 blah. But some of it was very annoying and repetitive. And I just don't give a fuck. Like, and it could be my period talking. And I know that there is, I'm no, 
of course I could shoot myself in the foot for saying this, but I just don't really fucking care. I'm over, I live in South Texas. I don't give a fuck. Like, bitch, I see this shit all the time. But the stained glass, like, I, I do have an admiration for the technique. I have an admiration for the technique. I'm just so fucking over the repetition of over 2,000 years of the same dog shit. I'm sorry, I'm being mean. Oh my god, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm being a professional hating bitch right now. I'm sorry. This is not like me. I do find Christ to be divine. I do enjoy the stories of Mary. I find it problematic that Gabriel impregnated her and just put a carry in, like, take care of it. I'm kidding. I don't care about any of that, honestly. Um, it's just my trauma talking. That's all it is. It's just my trauma talking. I'm just like, oh my god. I'm like, god damn, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> But yeah, no, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I'm not going to lie. It was fucking beautiful. It was immaculate. It was divine. I was so tired right now. I'm so sorry. Um, it was beautiful. And it was divine and immaculate and all that stuff. But I was more interested in other things. And there was like a lot of beautiful statues. And there's a lot of beautiful art that wasn't Christian in nature from other periods of time. And I found exhilaration looking at that stuff and um happiness and but also i was constantly concerned because my kids were getting a little too close to the painting they're setting off alarms and stuff and they're just being kids and i didn't mind it really i didn't mind them doing that because it was just kind of like a oh hey yes i'm back kind of thing but they were also like oh my gosh this is so boring <laughs> so i think what we're gonna do even though they experienced it and they did like the like when we got to the gods exhibit they were wow this is amazing but when we were like walking around looking at the regular kind of fine art, you know, the more permanent exhibits they have there, they were like, oh, wow, okay, like, cool, I guess. Can I go sit down somewhere? And I was like, yeah, that's fine, it's cool, whatever. Um, I liked looking at the jewelry and I liked, um, it, just, it was to me, it was nice. It was very refreshing and it was, it was very nice. Um, so we spent about four or five hours there. And then we went home. <sighs> and we began to do the trick-or-treating process and that took forever. Well, it felt like it took forever. It was because of the rain and everything. Um, but yeah, I am I'm really, really, really tired. Um, what I'm excited about right now is I've been remodeling my house and cleaning and purging really really a lot of purging in the house um getting rid of things i don't need and contemplating if i should keep books i no longer need or like like books that i've read before and i just didn't feel at that time a connection to the voice of the author the author the voice of the author the voice of the author or the a message or meaning like it has meaning it has purpose it is important but for me personally is it am i just should I just give this away or sell it back to a store or something like you know um there's a couple of books i have that i feel like i just don't like them and so i don't know why i keep them around like every time i look at them they kind of piss me off <laughs> it could just be my period i need to wait before i get rid of them anything i shouldn't be purging my house on my period because i'm gonna be like where the fuck did i put that one thing like right now i'm actually on the i have a manuscript from a book from a very long time ago and it's um i got it from a dead guy and it is a typewriter it's um it's like the i don't know how do you say is it a manuscript before the book becomes a book i have the book that was all typewritten like hand typed um, every single page in a box, um, and I lost it, I misplaced it, I would never get rid of it, um, but I did misplace it, oh, my nose is itchy, I misplaced it somewhere, and so I have to go figure out where the fuck did I put that, um, so I'm extremely anemic, my cycles are extraordinarily heavy, and I am anemic, um, I tried to counteract it by taking slow-release iron, but I just cannot seem to ever, like, 
ever get on top of my anemia. So uh, it sucks. So I'm kind of permanently spacey to an extent. I'm like always kind of mm, in and out of reality and I accept it. I understand myself. Um, and so if somebody had questions or felt like they needed to question me, I could explain myself very well but um how they take it is how they take it correct um yeah so sorry i'm so tired right now speaking of anemia <sighs> i feel like little nikki's angry brother adrian with my peppermint schnapps and my bonbons <laughs> um, I don't care. I love Adrian. Actually, he's such a fucking bitch. I love him. <laughs> he's one of my favorite characters. He's one of <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so, sorry, we're gonna be going back and forth. So, I, my costume was Satan's seventh bride. That's what I was joking. I was like, oh, that's who I'm gonna be. And then my friend was going to Satan. I was like, I'll be Satan's seventh bride. Ha 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 ha. Right? And this little sweet girl, I didn't have the fucking... I didn't have the audacity to tell her because she was dressed like Cinderella and I used to wear the same Cinderella dress every night to bed like I wanted to be always wearing a beautiful dress to bed or whatever I, don't know. I had a fear of dying in my sleep so I always wanted to look cute even as a like a three-year-old I was like I want to look pretty in case I die in my sleep I don't know why that was just something that I always thought about as a child and so this little girl in a Cinderella dress I said here you go, here's candy. What are you supposed to be? And I was like, um, mm, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. And I just laughed and giggled and walked off. And she was like, oh, okay, well, here you go, because you're dressed up. And she was so sweet and innocent, had the prettiest little like eyes. And I could not bring myself to tell her Satan's seventh bride. So am I a bitch? Yes. Am I a punk? For not being honest perhaps mm, perhaps not in these situations you really gotta weigh what you tell children and this is a four-year-old little girl i'm not gonna tell her i'm satan's seventh bride maybe i should have maybe it was a wake-up call maybe it was a call to action maybe i should have said like hun sit down because we're gonna have a discussion <laughs> first of all love your suit <laughs> no but um <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's what I was for Halloween. I was Satan's seventh bride, but really it was just me. <laughs> I was just dressed up um, in my normal outfit. I was just like, hee hee hee. But that was what I was telling people. And then one of my friend's daughters was like, hey, you look like a penguin. And I said, that's exactly what I am, honey. Because she was also a little girl with big, uh, cute blonde hair and big, big eyes. And there's no way in hell I could have told her. <laughs> But I told my friend, and I, I made a joke to myself. It was between me and myself. It was a joke. Um, I was like, I'm seeing seventh grade. <laughs> and so, whatever. I thought it was funny. Um, so I guess that's all that's going on. Um, but yeah, it's just been raining. I've been tired. I'm, on my, I'm in my cycle, and I just don't feel... Well, I'm also struggling with not feeling real. Like I said, I'm extremely anemic. And so when these things happen, it does take a huge toll on my body. The shedding process is extraordinarily, um, it's aggravating and I hate it. And it is aggravating and I feel, I feel it. And I try to logically tell myself like, hey, hun, bitch, like, look, you have hormones and you feel a certain way because of these things and and then i always go back to getting violently angry at christianity for being like this is your punishment you evil whore and i'm just like i want to eviscerate you and i'm not going to because it's wrong or whatever but like don't fucking talk to me <laughs> like i just god damn i really really hate that i think it's um it's very sad it's very sad becoming an adult and looking back at the western world and the things that shape it the, the key points and parts that play uh major roles in our development you know the polarities we bounce we bounce through the polarities we bounce through the polarities we kind of dance through between heaven and hell and what they tell us and what they think they know and 
especially living in the Bible Belt in the South, in South Texas. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's frustrating. And I noticed that whenever I, you know, I got to the point where I started looking at a lot of authors and poets and artists who have very similar thoughts, feelings, and values as mine, a lot of them kill themselves. And that said something to me, mostly that it is rare for people to go through the shit I've gone through, to feel the way I feel, and to survive past a certain time. Because sometimes the inner critic does take us out and it's not fair. It's not fair to ever feel like you're not worthy of, of life because you are. Um, the fact that you exist here at this moment and are watching this stupid video that I'm making, it's evidence enough that you're real and that you deserve a voice. You have a voice. You have a choice. And you could do whatever you fucking want, really. Um, and I hate whenever the body is out of balance and then that evil, nasty bastard of an inner critic comes into your brain and is telling you all of these crazy things like you're not good enough you're not worthy your art is shit nobody loves you shut the fuck up bitch like shut the fuck up like i give you permission to literally out loud be like shut the fuck up shut the fuck up shut the fuck up like who the fuck do you think you are bitch i had to do that the other day i noticed that like look i take antidepressants because my mother died this time last year right and it really did a number on my nervous system because I was guttural screaming in the garage at 2 o'clock in the morning. I used to hold her shirts, like her, her shirts, and I'd hold them, like wrap them around me. And I'd hold them and I would, real, like I had the realization that her form would never fill the shirt again. And it, it gutted me. And so I would scream, these primal screams, very late, very early in the morning in the privacy of my garage unedited unfiltered just raw emotion and it destroyed my nervous system and um so i had to regulate myself and so i had to go to a psychiatrist on my own accord talk to them explain the situation and they reassured me like wow yeah it's fucked up what you're going through maybe reach out to a therapist and then i did so i, I did all the appropriate things i could with what i had at the time i had to save up some money go to a psychiatrist pay down insurance, all kinds of strange things. It was an initiation process. It really was because I was not sure how to do that or what to do or whatnot. So I do take a very, very, like the lowest dosage of antidepressants because I just, I believe not addictive. Um, but the truth is everything is addictive to an extent. Everything is. Um, or at least allegedly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, sorry, one second. So, anyways, it's just, I guess it's difficult because last time, last year around this time, I had gone through that. And um, this year, I just feel like I'm trying my hardest to fill my time and space with new places and new faces, like going to the uh, Houston Museum of Natural Science and experiencing that with my children and also they let's not forget they lost their grandmothers both of them within a four months time from last October to last January to this January sorry or yeah last year, the past January last October to last January they lost both of their grandmothers um in four months two deaths of you know it's kind of insane and very tragic and um, so I've taken on the burden, not burden, I suppose a type of burden to fill our space and our time with as much out of door activities and also arts because arts help the human soul elevate these kind of traumatic things to a place in space where it can exist. You feel free, you can express, you know, and, um, it has helped. It has helped a lot for me personally but you know i feel like i've worn myself thin but it's a good it's a good wear out it's like after dancing all night long you're exhausted but it feels good you know um kind of thing it's like an exertion that is delectable and 
nice and delicious and I'm grateful for it because it's better than screaming as hard as I can out of anger and rage um, for something you know like that such as what happened to her it was so stupid anyways um, there was a her death was something I could not control I had to rest with that and then um, there was a lot of things that were out of my control that I had to just let happen and that that gutted me like the dullest blade known to man it slowly gutted me and it was such a process it was like jesus fucking christ like clawing through hot coals and rusty nails and broken glass it was horrible last october sucked so much dick <laughs> it was horrific I had to go up against a judge, a sheriff. I had to go up against, I mean, they were all, it was horrible, guys. It was really bad. So this October has been really good. Really, really good. And the contrast is magnificent. And I'm very grateful for it. But mm, the awareness is there that I still have four more months of bullshit that I have to kind of wade through of hidden, um, you know, the holidays are here. Ugh. So I have to, not four months, I'm sorry, two months. November eh, November and December and the beginning of January is when my husband's mother died. Hard to say, Mom. So I'm planning ahead. What have I done for November? Well, I booked tickets to go see the Houston Ballet. Um, we have balcony seats and we will be seeing the Nutcracker. Now, here's the thing. I haven't been to the ballet since I was in my teens. Um, I am now 32. So, and my kids have definitely never been to the ballet. And I think my husband may have been once. He said he was eight years old when he went and he was sitting next to a cute girl who was not me. So I don't know why he told me this. <laughs> okay. But you know, he said he sat next to some cute girl and he wasn't watching the ballet. He was watching the girl and trying to act cool. And I was like, you could have just said that to yourself. What's her name? I'm gonna go find her. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I was like, how dare you? Well, I said, well, you're gonna be sitting next to me this time. So wear something nice. We're going to the ballet. We're sitting in the balcony seats. But I don't know if I need a fire. Like anybody who's been to the ballet and sat in balcony seats, feel free to drop a comment and tell me like, what are the best the like binoculars or you know the viewing uh, apparatus? I guess that you guys have used um, to view theater because I've been looking and I don't know if I need to get regular binoculars or if that would be too mm, I don't want to look like a fucking hunter but <laughs> like <laughs> oh okay I'm <laughs> looking at the ballet like yes the nutcracker is fantastic is that the red king hubba hubba I'm just kidding <laughs> the red king hey hi red king <laughs> take me red king I'm just kidding <laughs> just kidding yo fuck that nutcracker everyone's just I'm kidding. Mm. Have you guys ever seen The Whitest Kids You Know? Have you ever seen the Abraham Lincoln skit from The Whitest Kids You Know? If not, just pause this video. Abraham Lincoln, The Whitest Kids You Know. Uncensored version. This censored version is very funny because they're like watching Hamlet. Well, you know, Abraham Lincoln is um, in the balcony of the Ford Theater. And so they give a retelling on the history, historically what happened with Abraham Lincoln. And um, it is funny. It is absolutely inappropriate. And it is hilarious. And I love it so much. I'm also, I, lately we've been watching a lot of drunk history. Me and my husband have. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Drunk history is so funny, but the whitest kid you know always has like a spot in my heart because I used to watch that when I was a kid, um, and that that's so funny. That's so funny. Like oh Hamlet, 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 Hamlet. Holy shit! I just got bit by a fucking vampire. Like the whitest kid you know is so funny. Um, yeah, very very sad what happened to him. Anyways, <sighs> yeah, it's it's very funny. Go ahead, Abraham Lincoln, the whitest kid you know, and then just be prepared for some dumb shit I think of that so whenever I, I got the balcony seats I was like thinking of Abraham Lincoln being like I don't know I mean, it's a spoiler I guess he's like I don't know why the fuck you're looking at me the fucking plays on the stage bitch <laughs> it's 
so funny. It's so fucking funny. Um, the early internet, well, not the early, yeah, yeah, the internet in its early stages. Holy shit. <laughs> it was good. It was, it was bad. It was horrible. But it was good. It was, it was ridiculous. It was fucking ridiculous. It's still fucking ridiculous, but it is, um, Mm, I don't know if we could argue it's tamer. Maybe we could argue if you want to argue. I guess if you're into arguing, it's arguable that the internet is more tame now than it was in its raw heydays of the beginning of it. Or the teen years of the internet when it was a teen, I suppose. When the public had access to the internet and it was, um, golly, it was weird. Golly. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I can't really argue it because I'm not omnipresent. But I could. I guess I could. I could argue anything, really, if I wanted to. I could argue right now if you want. Spark up an argument. <laughs> um, that's fine. <laughs> no, but this is, um, yeah, that's so funny. Why? Just because you know. It's so stupid. It was so fucking inappropriate and stupid. And, like, I had... When I was a kid, I had gone through so much in my life that anything that made me laugh was a safe haven. I was just like, please, somebody alleviate my fucking pain, <laughs> please. <laughs> and so anything funny, I was just like, thank God, that was a close one. <laughs> Anytime me and my friends found something funny to quote and laugh about, it was good. Um, it was great. We also we used to watch uh, my friend's father had a spike tv back in the day we used to always watch a thousand ways to die um i think it was on spike tv correct me if i'm wrong but i believe i believe so we used to always watch a thousand ways to die <laughs> sorry i have allergies because it's been raining and bringing down all the pollen and the mold and everything it's just, you know um yeah so anyways i i got balcony tickets to the Houston Ballet to go see the Nutcracker, and I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. Um, but then after that, or something. Oh yeah, I have to go figure out if we're gonna go to. Um, I, here's here's the thing. Yes, yes, yes. Christmas is coming up, and you know Thanksgiving. Oh, what the fuck ever. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving. We don't give a fuck about Thanksgiving. I don't give a fuck about the fucking pilgrims. I don't give a fuck about those assholes that landed. We oh, they needed the pizza of the Santa Maria. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm not from... Do you want to know who my people are? They're the Stuarts. They came... Yeah, the Stuarts. They came over after the Battle of Culloden, and my fucking ancestor got into a fight with a bunch of indigenous people, and he got burned at the stake. Um, and he probably deserved it, because he was probably an asshole. Anyways, his wife lived. <laughs> his wife lived. But they... Yeah, anyways, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> The whole thing but yeah no my people are the stewards out of west virginia but they came over you know i guess it was named james stewart captain james stewart that's so funny um I think, was it james and mary i don't know anyways he got burned at the stake he was i guess being kind of a dick or something and there was like a lot of tension between the indigenous people and the settlers or whatever and I don't really give a fuck that they burned his ass at the stake. I really don't care. I always find it hilarious. I'm like, yeah, one of my ancestors would burn at the stake. Like, a lot of ours was. If you're a steward, like, if you're a steward, you're probably from this motherfucker. Or the another one. But anyways, I think it was James and Mary. Mary Lafferty and James Stewart. Anyways, they came after the Battle of Culloden when all the stewards were getting drawn and quartered in the Scotland and England and whatnot. Because they were like, you know, treason or whatever, you know, all that shit, blah, 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 something like that. Something of that nature. I don't know. I wasn't there. But the, from what I gathered from snooping around my family history, allegedly that's what happened. I don't know. I don't really give a fuck. Um, different times. I don't, I don't care. Anyways, Mary remarried a couple of times. I think her husband's kept dying or something like that. And she kept like keeping, she held onto the land or whatever. And I was like, girl, get you some land. I don't give a fuck, like whatever. But there is a, um, their sons were kidnapped, or, you know, forcibly enslaved by the uh, indigenous people. I don't really care, whatever. Um, I have like literally a <laughs> family on both sides of the fence. So to me, it's just like, 
I don't feel a certain way about it at all other than I'm just like that's just information to me it's not like I have a emotional tie I'm not proud I don't really give a fuck um but that's just on my mother's side we're Stuarts um I come from a long line of West Virginia Stuarts so um <laughs> so whatever uh, I don't care why was I telling you that <laughs> Girl, I am so tired. I'm not, it's not even fucking funny anymore. I'm just so tired. But yeah, yeah, he always, he got burned at the stake and I always joke about that. I'm like, yeah, it's probably because his hair was red. And they were like, I want to see this motherfucker set on fire. No, it's probably because he was being a total fucking bastard. But I'd like to think, um, I've done astrology on him and I make charts. So I'm an astrologer. I'm not that much, but like I made charts for my ancestors from their birth day at roughly sometimes it was just like their birth they didn't have a day it was like their birth month and their birth year but based upon their life events I was able to find out the where the planets were at and that year and their month and figure out roughly what their birth chart would look like and so that was really fun because I was like well he died okay he died in a foreign land and he um he was burned at the stake so Perhaps he had Mars and Saturn in the 12th house opposing this, that, you know what I mean? So I, I did like some math and it was a very fun exercise to see if I could come up with an astrological chart for my ancestor um, that was reflective of his life and then also in alignment with what planets were in what places and the aspects within that month. And also the transits of the year that he died. So I don't know. That was something fun I did for a couple, like a week. It was a side project I did. I was like, well, what would that look like? You know, like, how would this be? And I know there's certain astrologers out there who do that kind of thing. They'll make astrological birth charts for characters, fictional characters and things like that. Or sometimes they'll make a, they'll grab a chart and then make a character like writers that's another exercise. They could grab a chart and then make a character off the chart and then go forward from there. I also know, like, the creative process of writing is it's beautiful, it's immaculate, and different for everybody. But some people go get tarot readings for their characters, and then the tarot reading, they'll write the book based on the cards, and that'll be how it unfolds, which to me is fun. I love that idea. In fact, when I fit, finally sit down to write a book, I need to go get a typewriter because I like that. I like typing, but I don't like it being on the computer. I'm very finicky. I'm very strange. I want to have a typewriter to type out my books. Um, I used to have a typewriter and I used to write up like uh, movies. I wrote movie, whatever, plays and things like that on my typewriter. And it was a lot of fun. Find it to be very enjoyable, but I don't like I've written things on computers and in my notes and things like that, and even on paper, like paper's okay, but there's something about a typewriter that's just, to me, it's very, um, I can flow better the way it is. And I like the sound and it's very, um, it's like my preferred way to actually write is typing because I could clock out and just go, you know, I could t -t 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 -t, and then I stop and I read and I go, who did that? Who wrote that? Which one of you motherfuckers? <laughs> Who the fuck wrote that? Because <laughs> I know it wasn't me. Uh, but yeah, no. To an extent, it is you. It's just you're allowing a certain aspect of yourself through. You know what I mean? And it's fun. So I need to go get a typewriter. But using tarot as a guide to help you guide thy hand through the writing creative process, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's fun to see... Um, artists all across the universe kind of doing strange things to um, have their art breathe and be alive to the, to seeing what kind of blood and bones and media goes into their art it's fun i like it a lot i like asking people where do you get your inspiration from well how do you do that how do you how blah 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 blah, blah. i don't like asking people really like okay so what does this piece mean because that's to me like Bitch, it means whatever you fucking want it to mean, girl. It's art. What are you talking about? Well, what does this mean? You're going to go up to an artist and ask them what it means? They don't want that. They want you to just look at it and know. Like, it's a, it's an unconscious thing. It's like a connection under the ground. It's like mycelium and the, the root system of the mushrooms and talking, communicating, sharing different 
vitamins and minerals to the earth. Um, it's, it's, it's an underground thing. It's like a, it's a underworld kind of traveling art is, you know, it's not supposed to be like you go up to the artist's house and bah, 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 on the door and be like, Hey, what the fuck did that fucking mean, bitch? Like, you're not supposed to do that. You can, I suppose, and nobody's going to stop you except the police. And even then, I mean, does it, I don't know. I'll bail you out. It's okay. I'll bail you out, babe. Just give me that one phone call. And I'll be like, hey, is that? Is that? <laughs> kidding. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, I, it's interesting. I like talking, though, about their process of, oh, what are you, like, how do you, mm, what are you doing? And so, um, people have their muses, right? We all have our muses, whatever. Like, we all have our mental illnesses. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but we do. We all have our little friends we talk to when no one's around. <laughs> Me talking to this camera. We all have our friends or whatever. Um, no, but we do all have our um, muses or our preferred way to create art. And um, somebody I talked to, I don't remember who, was like, well, I rent out a gallery. I turn all the lights off and I channel like something and I start dancing around and, and they're like and then I get really high and I channel this entity and then I let it come through me and create art and I'm like that's fun that's cool that's unique okay cool whatever like I don't throw anything out I'm not like wow you're fucking stupid I'm just like okay so he channels an entity after he smokes a bunch and he gets high that's how he does it his art's good so fuck it it works for him go on with your bad self I don't really care Okay, let your entity know. I think it's a good thing. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wow. Well, you guys are great collab. Do you um, write their name down? Or like, no, he hasn't told me his name yet. That's cool too. Whatever, bro. Like I don't care. <laughs> um, so anyways, I think it's funny. I think it's cool. Um, it's interesting talking to artists and being like, well, what do you do? How do you do? Do, 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 you know? And sometimes they're open and they're like, oh, thank God somebody asked me. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. And sometimes they're secret. Like, they want to hide it from the whole world. Like, they're very possessive of it. And it's a secret thing, you know? Um, but generally, I don't know. If you, I think it's kind of like extending an olive branch or something. Like, when you just ask a question with, like true like genuine curiosity like instead of being a, kind of a dick about it some people they ask questions like I have this relative and he always asks questions in such a condescending condescending like he's just a dick he's just a total fucking asshole to me um and he always pretends to be my friend and then he always reminds me that he's better than me He's so much better than us. I don't really give a fuck, honey. We all die. You're going to turn into ashes just as quickly as I am when we die. So shut the fuck up and get the fuck out of my face. Ew. Ugh. Ugh. Mm -mm. Get out of my face. So anyway. But yeah, he always talks to me in such a st stupid way. But then he'll ask questions of like... <sighs> loaded questions. And I'm just like, dude... So I have to like literally... Because he's also very obsessive um in a negative way so i just have to like um i guess confuse him and then walk off and giggle like an idiot i just have to act like a manic pixie girl around him and be like la, 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 la. i don't know because it, it keeps me safe i don't know it just keeps me safe i can't have a real big boy conversation with him because then he he thinks that, like i'm trying to fight with him or something like i start using words that are too big and if i am because I guess I'm because I'm a woman and that side of the family has issues with women I don't know having brain cells or something like that you know like they're meant to be quiet and use and be submissive and I'm just like dude suck my dick like bro I'm <laughs> I don't know who told you that I don't know what crack you've been smoking but you need to get a new dealer okay <laughs> like not to be rude but you're kind of a fucking loser bye anyways I hate him <laughs> So funny, he's such a dick. I'm really good friends with his ex-girlfriend, who he treated like absolute dog water. And I don't, I'll never forgive him. And I love seeing like on Facebook, she's doing good. She got a new boyfriend and she's like living her life. And she's like so wild and free and beautiful. She's like a fucking 
goddess. She's got the prettiest blonde hair and the prettiest eyes and the fairest skin. She's just like a fucking like Scandinavian goddess. And like, bitch, you fumbled the shit out of her. And I'm so happy she's doing well. I'm so happy you're not. It's just so good. Anyways, um, <laughs> and now is that wrong of me? I don't know. Listen, I'm on my period. Whenever I come off my period, I might not feel this way. No, no I, I'll still hate him because he's totally an asshole to me. But like, no, no, yeah, I am happy she's doing good because she deserves it. Because they treat her like shit. And any time a man treats a woman like shit because he's insecure, I'm like, dude, say less. Like, honey, what are you? <sighs> what? Like, ew. Like, oh, you, you're insecure, so you're going to verbally abuse your girlfriend? Um, have you thought about, I don't know, not doing that? Are breaking up with her and like going to therapy oh no because that would mean that you have to change mm, okay well i'm gonna steal your girlfriend and me and her are gonna go to therapy together and i'll drive her there and you can fuck off she's gonna block your number too no <laughs> i'm kidding but yeah it, it just it sucks the amount of like because i'm a girl i'm a girl i'm just a silly little uh right i'm a little stupid human girl um so the amount of like shit i've heard and physically gone through and mentally gone through and psychologically had to be shit i've had to psychologically weigh through walk through wade through not wade through it's like wade through with no waders on it's a lot it's a lot there's a lot of insecure possessive people not just boys and girls all kinds of people are insecure and possessive and it's like dude stop nobody can possess anything really we all die you could i mean even your eyes whenever you die they decompose and like so you do you really possess your eyes everything's temporary there's this part in moonstruck the movie moonstruck when the dad's like everything's temporary that and he's like that is not an excuse and he's like everything's temporary and that's yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah it's whenever shares like this like he gave me a ring and he's like that's a fucking pinky ring what the fuck are you talking about and she's like it's temporary and he was like everything's temporary but also he's cheating on his wife so fuck it <laughs> cosmos cheating on his wife like he's such an asshole <laughs> like what the fuck and his wife's a bad bitch so whatever anyways i love moonstruck it's such a good movie i love yeah. it so much my dog got outside hold up anyways i have to go walk my dogs and i have to go do other things I'm going to leave you guys with this ugly ass video, this ugly ass hair, and my ugly ass attitude. I'm so sorry. Um, give me a few days and I'll be back to normal, I think. I hope. I don't know. And if you've been to the ballet, what kind of like eyeball doodads do you guys use? If you've gone to the theater and used you, can you bring in regular binoculars? Do I need to call the ballet and act like a fucking loser? I guess I have to. I guess that's the kind of thing. I gotta humiliate myself to get the information. So I'll call and be like, hey, can I bring in hunting hunting binoculars? Telescope. A fucking telescope to the balcony. Why not? Why not? Also, yeah, why not? <sighs> oh, fuck. I'm embarrassing. Okay, I will see you guys later. I'm so sorry. I have to go edit this. I don't know what the fuck I said. And I'm tired. I need to go sleep. I need to go to sleep. I need to eat some iron, take some ibuprofen, and go to bed. Okay, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you're having a good, a good. Okay, so goodbye.